Brad Duguid, to you first. The cost of energy seems to be going up. How come? Well, in 2003, we inherited an energy system that was in, in a virtual state of collapse. Uh, it had to be rebuilt. We had to make important investments in our energy infrastructure, rebuild our transmission system. Uh, we had to uh, build new generation, uh, and we've done that. We've built over 8,000 to 9,000 megawatts of new power. And we felt that we couldn't any longer keep polluting our air and impacting the health of ourselves and our children through dirty coal. Uh, so we felt we, we've got to get out of dirty coal. Uh, so we've moved from dirty coal to cleaner sources of power. And all these things cost and money. And all of these you can't do for free. Now, okay. uh, to be clear, in the last year, because of our clean energy benefit... Uh, We're going to get to that. Hold yeah. off on that for a second. Because right. that's part of the bill. And if it's part of the bill, it's part of the program. Okay. You got any quibbles with what he just said about why the prices are going up? Uh, absolutely. Um, it's their story and they're sticking to it. Uh, but the reality is that uh, in the last couple of years, energy prices have es escalated dramatically, and much of it is uh, due to the feed-in tariff program uh, that they've introduced, paying exorbitant subsidies uh, to produce power from renewables, uh, much higher than the cost, uh, the cost, the market price of power. That has driven up uh, the price of power dramatically. And we, we talk to people, as you said in your opening, the price of power has got everybody on edge. And that's what we hear across the province continuously, is that uh, people can no, f no longer afford uh, electricity increases uh, like Dalton McGinty has uh, foisted upon them. Peter Tavins? Well, I disagree with both of them, obviously. Okay. <laughs> uh, we look at a situation where, in fact, green energy contributes a very small amount to the increase. You have the environmental commissioner here on the show saying it was about 4% of that increase. The investments in nuclear, the investments in new gas-fired power plants, the refusal to come to terms with profiteering with the system that was set up by Harris and Eves, those are the things that have been drivers of the cost, not green energy. Steve? When I'm out talking to people in Guelph, and I talk to them about their electrical bill, I say, you know, here's your option. We can either, you know, give you a new uh, air conditioner, uh, invest in efficiency and conservation, or we can build a new uh, nuclear generating plant. We've got Darlington, we've got Refurbish. Is that going to be $6 billion, $10 billion, or three times that? All our nuclear plants have never come, on and come in on time or on budget, and that is why our electrical bills are getting higher. Okay, Steve Applin, you're here because you don't represent any political party, and you're kind of a, if I can put it this way, a reality check on all of what we hear around the table today. But let me get your take on it. Why do you think energy prices are going up? Uh, partly because of the FIT program. The, the uh, minister brought, in, brought up the idea of, uh, uh, of uh, new nuclear and, and, uh, and the feed-in tariff. The feed-in tariff is driving price hikes, but not as high as some people might think. Uh, they're being held down, actually, paradoxically, contrary to what Mr. Tavis, what Mr. Dick said, by the low price of nuclear. This is something that a lot of people don't realize. It's the, our second cheapest source in the province. The Liberal government has brought in two uh, reactors at uh, Pickering, two at Bruce, uh, since they came into uh, office, and that is, that is what has uh, produced most of the carbon reductions, and that's low-cost power. That's around an average of 5.5 cents per kilowatt hour. 5.5 cents per kilowatt hour compared to, for the feed-in tariff well, program, the, the, between 40 and 80? Well, no, the, the cheapest wind is, uh, is 11 cents, so twice, what, twice nuclear, and most wind is under the feed-in tariff is 13.5 cents. Then you go north of that to the... Uh, to the microfit where you get into the 80 cent range. Let me just understand, John Yakubuski. If the Conservatives were in power right now, are you saying hydro prices wouldn't be going up? We are saying they will go up a whole lot less than under this program because, uh, and, and, and con contrary to what Peter says about uh, the cost of the FIT program or, or uh, Brad, Canadian Manufacturers and Exporters Association, they released a report that said the feed in tariff will lead to increases of $732 per year per home in the province of Ontario through the, uh, through the life of, of the program. Those, those kinds of increases are the things that people are just beside themselves with because they cannot afford that. You can't budget for, I mean, if you're on a, on a smart meter uh, on time of use pricing, your hydro rates are 150% higher at peak than they were when Dalton McGinty took power at 4.3 cents a kilowatt hour. You know, it, it's time to stop making excuses, John. And, and your party left the energy system in an absolute mess in 2003, and you still to this day haven't learned a thing from that. You do need to make investments in the system to ensure we have a reliable system, number one. Number two, if you're serious about getting out of coal, and most of your caucus members aren't because they made comments contrary to that, 
You need to make investments to move from coal to cleaner right. sources of power. We've built a clean energy economy here in this province that's among the leaders in the world. $20 billion of investment are flow is flowing into Ontario as a result of those feed-in tariff programs. 20,000 jobs for Ontario workers already created. 50,000 jobs will be created by the end okay. of next year. For you to want to tear all of that down and put all those people out of work, that's fiscally and economically absolutely irresponsible. Let me go to Peter push. Tabins for, for a comment on this, because if I understand basically what the Liberal vision is on this, the Liberal position is it's been a good idea to subsidize, in effect, sometimes overpay, as Steve puts it, for green power generation, because A, it creates new jobs that Brad Dugood just talked about, and it has these environmental benefits. As a vision, does that make sense to you? Well, I've always thought that it made sense to invest in new technologies, just as in the 80s we invested in computers in this province to computerize business. That's an advance. It's an advance to invest in mobile phones as we move away from landline technology. We're moving forward. But the key thing, Steve, is that this government has been spending $40 for new generation for every dollar they put into efficiency. If they invested heavily in efficiency and conservation, that would balance things out. That would actually give us more affordable rates. But that's not where they're oriented. They're oriented towards building a very large nuclear plant in this province. And frankly, if you look at how nuclear is paid for in this province, a big chunk, chunk comes out of our tax bill. We'll get into the debt retirement mm -hmm. charge, but it's more than just on our bill. It comes out of our province's general revenue. Steve Dick, I hear this all the time, that if we spent, or we were as committed to conservation as we were in building new build, uh, we wouldn't be spending the kind of money we are. But I hear others saying, yeah, but you wouldn't have baseline power, meaning base load power? Base load. Base load, base load power, which means when you flip the light on, you can be 100% guaranteed there's gonna be something there. You wanna help well, us on that? In the last 10 years, the uh, energy efficiency of air conditioners, refrigerators, has doubled. It takes half the power to run your air conditioner that it used to. So in terms of baseload, you know, and I'm not talking about shutting down nuclear power plants. What I'm talking about is building new nuclear power. That is definitely down the wrong road. We can create good jobs, jobs that actually have a real business case. There is no business case for a new nuclear power plant. And for sure when we turn the light switch on, the lights will go on under your scheme. Absolutely. We, Ontario has, we've, we've already invested in all kinds of natural gas power. We've got all kinds of hydropower. Our coal plants and our nuclear power plants, they have been underwriting the cost of nuclear power for the last 15 years. The actual cost of nuclear power is probably 26 cents a kilowatt hour. If we look at the debt retirement charges and all the costs that hydropower has actually been underwriting for nuclear power. Okay, so hold Steve, off on that. One word second. to hear and then a word to Steve well, when we're going to well, move on. Well, first off, uh, both my colleagues there are, are underselling uh, the efforts made by Ontarians to conserve. I mean, Ontario has the strongest targets in all of North America on conservation. We saved 1,700 megawatts of power since 2003. Are we hitting the targets? Together. Uh, we are absolutely determined to hit the targets so and we've been hitting, hitting our yet. targets. Uh, well, we, most we, of it's by shutting down manufacturing we absolutely, plants. No, that's not true at all. Uh, we, we've had some of the, we have some, uh, we have some of the North American leading conservation programs in place today. Our SaveOnEnergy.ca program is 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 a world leading program. It's 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 it's, it's going to create some fantastic opportunities for families to conserve. We have some fantastic programs out there for businesses to conserve. We're making great progress, okay, and we're leading give, North America. Let me give some what you're suggesting is that we can Time do out, even guys. more. We gotta, we're, we're happy to try to do we more, gotta make sure but we it's hit not going to be able to replace all gotta those We've got to hit all the aspects on this hydro bill here. So, Steve Applin, last word on this segment that we've just done here. Uh, the the uh, cost of nuclear that Mr. Dick referred to, I don't know where the 26 cents per kilowatt hour, or 26 cents per kilowatt hour comes from. That's It's uh, just wrong. It's, it's five and a half cents. You it's, tell me a number. It, it's five and a half cents. Tell me a number Our, the, the when you can actually insure a nuclear in, power plant. The decommissioning is included in the, in the uh, uh, decommissioning and waste is included in the five and a half cents. The, it's the second lowest rate in the province, second only to uh, uh, the hydro, and we couldn't rebuild all, build our hydro system and get the rates that we get out of it now. It simply wouldn't happen. It's the second lowest cost source in the province. Okay. The other sources are piggybacking off it. We're, we're not seeing a gigantic s skyrocket in the fit rate, in the uh, 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 cost of fit, because most of the power comes out of nuclear plants.